Hi, welcome to this podcast um, for Accounting for Plan Assets. In this particular podcast, we're going to talk about um, calculating depreciation. So this is a pretty important podcast. We're going to learn how to depreciate assets with uh, three different methods. Okay, so the idea of depreciation is allocating the, the cost of the plant asset to expense over the useful life of the asset. So we buy a machine, the machine lasts five years. Um, we don't want all that expense obviously in the first year because it's going to provide value for five years. So what we'll do is we'll look at these methods is how we how we take the cost of that and spread it out to expense over five years. This supports our matching principle. So again, it's matching expenses and revenues in the same period. If the machine is going to um, provide revenue, meaning it's producing products, it's going to provide value. That's probably a better way of saying it. It's going to provide value for five years. Then we want to match expense against that for five years. Um, <clears throat> there are some things which factor into depreciation, like wear and tear and obsolescence. And one thing that we want to understand is that the plant asset land is never depreciated. Um, the reason for this is that land has an unlimited useful life. The land never goes away, it's always there. So, <clears throat> depreciation is not a valuation process. Some of you might think of that. In fact, many of you, the, your, your first experiences with depreciation are something along the lines of, uh, you buy a new car, you drive it off the lot, and it depreciates. Um, that is a drop in the value of the car. That is not the same thing as accounting depreciation, which I just defined a second ago. So this is not, uh, the idea is not to match what the market value of the asset is. And it's also not a fund to replace the asset. It's just spreading the cost of the asset over its useful life. There's three pieces of information we need in order to calculate depreciation. We need to know the cost of the asset. And <clears throat> just uh, the prior podcast to this, um, there were several showing you how to arrive at the cost of the asset. Um, and then we need to estimate the useful life of the asset, how long we think it will last. And then we also will estimate the residual value, or sometimes this is called the salvage value. And that is what we think the asset will be worth once we're done using it. Um, there's a term you might want to be familiar with called depreciable cost. Uh, sometimes this is called depreciable base. It's the exact same thing. It's just the cost of the asset minus the residual or salvage value. And what it represents is the amount of the asset, the, the, the cost of the asset that we're going to depreciate. So we're not going, we're going to depreciate the cost minus the residual value. So there are, there's several depreciation methods. There's three primary methods that we're going to learn in this textbook. Um, the most common, as you can see from this graph, is straight line method. Um, from this, whatever statistics this came from, 83% of the companies choose straight line. Uh, some might use a declining balance method, and we're going to learn double declining balance. There are a couple of other types of declining balance methods. Um, only 4% of the organizations use that, and about 5% use um, units of activity method, or sometimes this is called the units of production method. In fact, I would actually say it's more commonly referred to as the units of production method. Um, and then, you know, again, there's other types of methods, so all of the others together represent about 8%. So in order to um, do this, let's look at an example. Um, so Barb Florist uh, buys a small delivery truck on January 1st. The cost of the truck is $13,000. It's expected to have a residual or salvage value of $1,000. And our estimated useful life in years, we think it will last five years, or, you know, for our units of production method or activity, um, we think it will go 100,000 miles. So that's the information that we need, right? The cost, the, the residual value, and what we think the useful life is in order to calculate depreciation. So we want to then go through and do these um, with straight line, units of production, and double declining balance. 
Okay, so straight line, the idea of straight line is it's the same amount of expense for each year. And again, we use the depreciable cost, so cost minus salvage value. So in this case, cost of 13,000 minus salvage value of one gives us depreciable cost of 12. That's how much we're going to depreciate. We're gonna do that for the five years. So we come up with $2,400 of expense, depreciation expense each year. And if I were to put together a table, this is what it would look like, um, right? The annual depreciation. Remember, this says accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation then is the accumulation or the adding up of all the depreciation expense. So this, you know, 4,800 is, is 14 plus 15 is the 4,800. And the book value, and I would encourage you if you've forgotten how to calculate book value to look back in your textbook to, to figure that out. Um, but if you can recall, it is the cost of the asset, in this case 13000 minus the amount of accumulated depreciation gives us the book value. And of course, um, we learned this adjusting entry in an earlier chapter, and that's what we're, we're doing. We, we've, we have calculated the amount of depreciation expense so we can record this journal entry. Okay. I want to add to this a little bit, uh, this idea of partial year. So what we had calculated was at, at, at uh, $2,400 is how much depreciation would be recorded in the first, in, in for the year. And that was fine because we bought the truck, truck, I think, on January 1st or January 2nd or something like that. But what happens if we don't buy it in January? Let's assume that instead we bought this delivery truck on April 1st. Well, we would still calculate depreciation exactly the same, and we come up with $2,400 of depreciation expense. But remember, that's for the entire year. Um, we only owned it from April to the end of the year. So we would then take a, take a partial year calculation of 9 twelfths. And so our first year depreciation would only be $1,800. So we wouldn't record $2,400 here. We'd record $1,800. And then you can see in the next several years, we're doing the full amount because we had the asset for the full time. And then finally in that last year, and really it's only those first three months, right? January, February, and March, we need to take an additional 600. <clears throat> so partial year, it is important when you're doing depreciation expense, especially with time-based methods like straight line and double declining balance, that you follow along with the um, uh, you follow along, uh, excuse me, you pay attention to the dates. All right, I'm going to stop this here and we'll pick up units of activity in a separate podcast.